Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's Children's Worship Service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful, and I hope you learned a lot. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us this time to study your word. We pray that this lesson just reminds us that you're always with us. So remove any distractions right now as we receive this lesson. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad you're here with us at the St. John Church. It's a good thing that you're joining us this month because we're finding out how we can hang in there when life gets tough, how we can hold on when we feel like we're slipping, how we can live our lives with grit. Remember, grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. Life gets tough sometimes, but we can't give up. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote in, in our memory verse for this month, Galatians chapter 6 at verse 9. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. And I love that verse because it means, you know, all of our hard work, all that holding on, all that trusting in God, it'll be worth it in the end. It's time for worship. And I'm so glad to be here with you today. So, you know, get on your feet. We know that even when life gets tough, we can always trust God. God is always faithful and true. So come on and let's have some fun as we worship. Here we go. Everything keeps telling me to quit and I go where I'm going. I love these words from Psalms 106 and 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. When we worship God, we remember all that God has done and respond by lifting our voices you know, in praise. You know, our faithful God deserves every song we could ever sing. Uh, so let's get into our lesson today. It's great to be here as we continue God's big story together. And if you were here last week, you know that we met a little baby boy named Moses. And we'll find out what happened next to Moses in, in just a minute. But first, let's recap what we've, where we've been so far. Uh, in the beginning, God made everything, including people. And Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and their relationship with God was broken. But God had a great rescue plan 
God chose a man named Abraham and his wife, Sarah. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. And during the time of Abraham and Sarah's great grandson, Joseph, Abraham and Sarah's descendants, the Israelites, uh, moved to, to Egypt in order to find food. And over time, the Israelites, uh, the, their families just kept growing and growing. And the Egyptian Pharaoh was worried that they might, you know, turn against him. So he decided to enslave them. The Egyptians treated the Israelites very harshly and, and made them work really hard. And the Israelites cried out to God for help. And, and you know what? God heard the cries of the people and chose someone to help them. Can you guess who? Yes, an Israelite man named Moses. That's right. That little baby boy that we talked about last week was all grown up. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's palace. But when he saw how badly the Israelite people were being treated, he got really angry. He ran away from the palace and became a shepherd in a land called Midian. And that's where we'll pick up things today. At this point, Moses is a lot older. He, he was 80 years old. Um, one day he was taking care of his sheep uh, when he saw a burning bush. It was a very strange sight because no matter how long the bush burned, it, it didn't burn up. It just kept burning. Of course, Moses was really curious, so he went to investigate. When Moses got closer, he heard a voice coming out of the bush, calling his name. Moses, Moses. It was the voice of God. God said to Moses, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you're standing on is holy ground. And God continued by saying, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I have seen how my people are suffering in Egypt. I have heard them cry out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to save them from the Egyptians. I will bring them out of the, that land. I will bring them into a good land. It has a lot of room. It is a land that has plenty of milk and honey. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Israel. They are my people. Wow. God had seen and heard what the Israelites were going through and how badly they were being treated. God wanted Moses to help them. Of course, Moses had been adopted by Pharaoh's daughter when he lived in Egypt. But Moses didn't know who the new Pharaoh was now. Not to mention, Moses was raised in the palace. Would the other Hebrew uh, people even, even want his help? And who was he to do such an important job? Needless to say, Moses was pretty nervous. So Moses talked to God about it, and God promised to be with him. But Moses was still scared. Moses asked God what, what would happen if the people didn't believe that God had sent him. God responded by giving Moses a sign. God told Moses to throw his stick on the ground. Moses did, and it turned into a snake. When Moses picked up the snake, it turned back into his walking stick. Even with this miracle and, and two other miracles that God showed Moses, Moses was still scared. Moses told God that he wasn't good at speaking and, and he thought he might he might mess up. He begged God to send someone who would who do, who would be better at speaking. So God told Moses that his brother Aaron would speak to the people for him. So Moses and his brother Aaron traveled back to Egypt together. With Aaron's help, Moses spoke to the Israelite people to tell them what God had promised. Moses explained that God would lead them out of Egypt and give them a better land. The Israelites believed Moses and, and they worshiped God. Then Moses and Aaron went to speak to the Pharaoh, you know, the leader of all Egypt. Look at what he well, look at what they said. And they said, The Lord is God of Israel. He says, Let my people go. But the Pharaoh refused. He said, Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Why should I let Israel go? I don't even know the Lord, and I won't let Israel go. Instead of releasing the Israelites, Pharaoh made them work even harder. <laughs>
This made the Israelite people mad at Moses and Aaron for angering the Pharaoh and making things even worse. They didn't understand yet that it was all part of God's plan. So later, Aaron performed the miracle for the Pharaoh that God had shown Moses. He threw his walking stick down on the ground and it turned into a snake. But Pharaoh still wouldn't let the people go. The next day, Moses and Aaron met Pharaoh down by the river. Aaron struck the Nile as God had instructed him to do, and all the water in Egypt turned to blood. But still, Pharaoh was stubborn and he wouldn't let the Israelites go. And over and over again, Moses demanded that Pharaoh let the people go. Over and over again, the Pharaoh said no. Then God sent a series of plagues. There were frogs, and gnats, and flies, and boils. There was hail, and locusts destroying crops. And all the livestock animals died, so there was no food. Then there was complete darkness for three whole days. Still, the Pharaoh wouldn't set God's people free. Finally, Moses and Aaron went to see Pharaoh for the last time. Moses warned Pharaoh that all the firstborn sons of every household, even the Pharaoh's own son, would die. Even the firstborn male's animals would die if Pharaoh didn't set God's people free. God told Moses how to save the Israelite people. If they painted the blood of a lamb over their door frames, then the plague would pass over their house and they would be safe. And sadly, Pharaoh still refused to listen. But later that night, when he saw what happened and, and heard the cries of the people, he finally let the Israelites go. The Israelites packed up all of their belongings, took their flocks and herds in the middle of the night, and left as quickly as they could. After hundreds of years of being enslaved, God's people were finally free. God had heard their cries and pleas for help and had rescued them. And we'll find out next week what happened as the Israelites left. But the important thing to remember for now is that whatever is happening in our lives, God knows what we're going through. When we face tough things, we're never alone. God's people were stuck in an awful situation and they cried out to God for help. God heard them and sent Moses to help them. In the end, God came through to free them. And let's remember this. It's our bottom line. Hold on, because God knows what you're going through. Just like God heard the Israelites so long ago, God also hears us today. Let's talk to God now. God, thank you for always hearing us when we pray. Thank you for always being with us, no, no matter what we go through. And thank you for knowing what we need. When we go through tough times, please remind us to hold on and remember that you're there to help us. Thank you for loving us that much. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What a story. Think about what it must have been like for the Israelites back then. They kept hoping and praying and calling out to God for help for hundreds of years. I'm sure there were times when they wanted to just give up on God, but they held on. And God was with them the whole time. God knew what they were going through. And God also has a plan to save them. Moses had seen firsthand how God was with him when he saw the burning bush. He knew that God was with him when he and Aaron went to talk to the people. And when they went before the Pharaoh. God really understood what the Israelites were going through all those years. And you can have that same confidence today that God sees you too. And remember, God's rescue plan wasn't only to free the Israelites from being enslaved in Egypt. This was just the beginning. God's ultimate rescue plan was for all of us. God sent Jesus to rescue us from the consequences of our sin. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all the wrong things we've done. And when we choose to follow Jesus and put our trust in him, he gives us the power we need to keep going. Jesus can even help us show grit and, and keep going through the things we face each day. Like maybe you have trouble with math and all those numbers get mixed up in your head or, or maybe you lose your temper really easily because you're super competitive. Well, those things won't just go away overnight, but you can ask God to help you with it 
in any situation. When we face tough things, we can know that God sees us and knows what we're going through. God will help us, even if it's not always the way that we expect. See, one of our basic truths is that we can trust God no matter what. God is always there to help us. And God puts amazing people in our lives to help us too. For example, your amazing teachers here at, at church. Have you ever thought how hard it would be to learn more about God and understanding all these Bible stories without the leaders here to help you? So when the video ends, think about that and make sure that you let the person uh, who's, who's teaching today know how much you appreciate them and how amazing they are. So thank you for joining me this week. I pray that you've learned two things, that you can trust God no matter what, and that you can hold on because you know that God knows what you're going through. So this week, when the challenges come, you hold on because God sees you, he cares, and he knows what you're going through. So until I see you again, may God bless you and your family. Take care. Everything keeps telling me to quit and